The Prime Minister dropped a bombshell on all of us yesterday, announcing the election for Saturday the 14th of September and kicking off an eight-month campaign. Julia Gillard joins us now from Melbourne this morning and we'll be getting reaction from Nine political editor Laurie Oakes in Canberra right after that. First to the Prime Minister. Good morning, PM. Good morning, Carl. Nice uh, of you to be with us this morning. An eight-month campaign. Are you trying to kill us? <laughs> Carl, relax, relax, relax. This is not day one of the election campaign. I made it perfectly clear yesterday what I wanted to do was cut out all of the silly nonsense that goes with election date speculation, let people know when the election is so that they can plan their year. It's the 14th of September. And also give enough notice so everyone contesting the election can put out all of their detailed and properly costed plans before election. Day. The writs will be issued on the 12th of August. That's the first day of the election campaign. For now, these are the days of governing and what I'll be doing today is going to Bundaberg to meet with people and to get with local briefings about the situation there. But PM, in effect, it is day one of the campaign, isn't it? Um, everything you and Tony Abbott will do from here on will be through the prism of election 2013. Not on my part, Carl. I've got work to do as Prime Minister, serious issues of governing, serious issues about strengthening our economy and making sure people have got the benefit of jobs, uh, serious issues about improving our Australian schools so we're not left behind the standards of the world and every kid gets a chance. And I want to start the National Disability Insurance Scheme. So I'll be doing my work as Prime Minister and it is now perfectly clear to everyone which are the days of governing and which are the days of campaigning. The Australian reports this morning that Rudd supporters are calling this an act of bastardry designed to save your leadership. Your response? Oh, look, you know, uh, whatever to all of the flibbity-gibbet politics that goes on in newspapers and beyond. Uh, the reasons for my decision were outlined yesterday. They are about cutting out election speculation, Carl. You and I both know that a lot of this year would have been spent on stories and rumours and half-truths about when the election was going to be. I would have had my car chased down the street to see whether or not it was going to the Governor-General's. All of that nonsense is now out of the way and we can get on with the serious business of governing. Time's not for wasting. There is a lot to do. And for the election, people have got all the time they need to get their policies and plans out there. You've also managed to get Kevin Rudd out of the way by doing this, haven't you? Oh, look, Carl, uh, nothing about this decision was in any way related to that. We decided those things last year. OK. Tony Abbott says um, this election will be about trust. That was his response yesterday. No doubt this, um, from your last campaign, will be part of their campaign. Take a listen. There will be no carbon tax under the government I lead. So if it's about trust, how will you combat that tactic was? Well, I'll be perfectly clear with people that I always wanted us to tackle climate change. We're living through climate change. It's a serious issue for our nation and for the whole planet. I always wanted to tackle climate change. I always wanted to put a price on carbon. I didn't imagine we would have a fixed price, a carbon tax, for three years. But yes, we're having it for three years and then it'll go to an emissions trading scheme. But so the case I will be putting to, car putting to people, Carl, is climate change change is real. Mm. The best way of tackling it is pricing carbon and we've got that done. You know, that's done. Carbon's being priced. Uh, our economy's still working uh, well. All of the horror claims and all the rest that people had to listen to have not come true. Uh, so we've got that job done. We should leave it being done and get on with the rest of what we've got to do for the nation. PM, why did you uh, tell the independents before members of your own party about the election? Uh, in the agreement with the independents, there's a reference to the election date, so I thought as a matter of courtesy I would let them know. But why wouldn't you tell your own party before them? Well, uh, Carl, obviously I told the whole nation through the National Press Club. But you didn't tell your own, your own party before the independents. Are there, are there problems with your own party in relation um, to your communication with them? Oh, Carl, all of this kind of process stuff, you know, uh, uh, political commentators care. I don't think anybody else does. Uh, 
setting the election date has always been the decision of the Prime Minister. It would have been my decision had I chose to make it later in the year. I've chosen to do an unusual thing, admittedly, but something that I think mm. is in the interests of the nation, and I announced that decision. I made a couple of courtesy calls along the way. What do you say to, to members of your party who, who may well be justified in saying, hang on a second, you told Rob Oakeshott before you told me. What does that say about our relationship? Uh, Carl, I don't think uh, any of this is meaningful or matters. Uh, people in the Labor Party, in the Labor caucus, uh, can always get on the phone and speak to me. I speak to my colleagues regularly. But this is my decision as Prime Minister and I've made it. OK. There appears, uh, just uh, before we finish up, there appears to be a little bit of anger in Queensland, um, uh, uh, anecdotally that is, uh, that you haven't visited the flood zone um, and for the timing of the announcement. What would you say to Queenslanders? Well, I'm going to be in Bundaberg today. I, of course, get round the country to visit Australians who are facing natural disasters. This year already, I've been to Tasmania to see the site of the bushfires. I've been to country Victoria to see what happened there. And I'm going to Bundaberg today to get on the ground briefings and to see it for myself. Uh, there's always the right time to go. And uh, I'm very careful that I don't go during the absolute emergency response because I don't want my visit in any way to distract resources from the emergency effort. So today is the right time to go so that I can be on the ground talking to people. I think the, re the response so far from what I saw on the ground in Bundaberg uh, has been exceptional from the state and federal governments thus far. Appreciate your time, PM, on another busy day. Thanks very much. OK. Well, let's go straight to Nine Political Editor Laurie Oakes right now. Laurie, your response? Well, there seems to be a certain naivety there, Carl. This idea that calling and naming the election date then stops people thinking about it as an election campaign is, is just ridiculous. It means that now, when Julia Gillard is governing, it's going to look like politicking anyway because everyone knows when the election is. She's put it out there, and, and her own party is, is muttering about this today. I haven't run into anyone yet who really understands the alleged brilliance of this strategy. Mm. No one was going around the press gallery yesterday afternoon explaining why it was clever. The whole government PR uh, system seemed to go into retirement suddenly. This is an election campaign. Uh, Julia Gillard is kidding herself if she thinks it's not. And it, from now on, everything she does will be seen through the prism of an election. She Look, can't get away from that. It's, yeah, it's, it's certainly got everyone talking about the merits. Yeah. Um, will it work? Can she win? Well, if it does work, she'll be regarded as, as a brilliant political strategist, and quite rightly. Uh, I got my doubts about whether it will work. Uh, for example, in an election campaign, the opposition automatically gets increased sta status. So Tony Abbott, as the alternative Prime Minister, will get more attention. So Julia Gillard has, in fact, given him you know, a more valuable forum by making the election date official. So instead of Tony Abbott getting much more attention for five weeks, he'll get more attention for seven months. That's one thing that Julia Gillard's given away. If things go wrong and the, uh, the date of September 14 suddenly looks a bit inconvenient and things are going bad for the government, she's given away the, uh, the opportunity to delay the election until things improve. This is what's bewildering some of her followers. So a little bit more swagger in Tony Abbott's swagger. I'll tell you what, Tony Abbott thought yesterday was Christmas. And when you think about it, normally oppositions are at a disadvantage. They don't know when the election date is going to be exactly, so they have to plan in a vacuum. Now Tony Abbott and uh, the Liberal Party campaign director, Brian Lochnane, know exactly when the election day is. They can book their commercials now. They can book their halls for meetings. They can line up their campaign staff and tell them when they're needed. They... they have all the certainty that, uh, that oppositions have never had before. And uh, th they certainly think this is a huge advantage for them. And, and the Liberals don't think that Julia Gillard's plan to use this to flush Tony Abbott out and make him announce policies earlier will work. He now knows exactly when the election is, so he knows how long he can keep his policies under wraps. Good on you, Laurie. Always good to talk to you. Thank you.